Hi everyone! Welcome back to a special episode of the Seattle Stitcher. This week is actually just going to be about my kitted up projects. So I wanted to do a kit parade. If you've seen my videos, you've pretty much seen everything I've ever kitted up, but I decided I really wanted to make a special video and kind of go over that stuff. I thought it would be fun. So I'm just hanging out in my corner of the living room, my mommy corner as I call it, and I'm gonna go through my kitted up projects with you guys. So all of my projects are in these bags from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description box, but that's what every single one of them is. I've bought in like two packs of these bags. I think they come in like packs of 10, or 15 or something like that and um, I'll leave the dimensions below I think it's like an 11 by 10 or something I don't know it's bigger than that but I can't quite remember so anyways I'm just gonna go through all of my kitted up projects and um, maybe this will kind of give you guys a better idea of what I like to stitch on or maybe this is just the first video you have happened to find of mine but I'm hoping that this gives people insight on my style of stitching because I don't really, I suppose, talk too much about myself or like my journey of stitching. I just kind of started a floss tube. <laughs> so I'm gonna hop right in, as I always say. And my first project that I wanted to show you guys, this is the Prairie Schooler um, Sweeping Cobwebs. And I have this one kitted up with the Called For DMCs as well as the Called For Fabric. This is a, um, 32 count lamb's wool, just a 13 by 18 piece. And all of these prairie schoolers, this kind of like, I don't know if you'd call it a series, but they do all look like they go together. All of them call for this lamb's wool. I will say it's a 32 count, but it's, it's tight. Like it calls to be stitched two over two and it's hard to stitch on this fabric two over two. The next one I have is pumpkin patch. I'm trying to like make it to where there's not too much glare. So Hopefully it's working. Um, I really liked this one because I liked all the words on it. I really like stitching words. And I also have the called for lambs wool for that one. And I do have the called for DMCs for all these projects as well. The next one I have is um, Bump in the Night. This, that one's super cute. And again, another piece of lamb's wool. <laughs> so um, I do kind of wish that I would have purchased a piece of this and seen like how hard it was to stitch on, but a little late now. Um, I do have one of these in my active whips and um, maybe I'll do a whip parade right after this one so that I can kind of go over all those with you guys. But these are all the called for DMC colors. So lots of greens, oranges, browns, um, a white, yeah, just all DMCs. So I have all of these put together because I kind of plan on stitching them all together. So I just kind of have them all stacked up all together in one bag. <laughs> it kind of saved me space as well because obviously I'm running out of these bags. I need to make another order already. <laughs> so that one's really fun. <clears throat> My next kitted up project, this is actually one of the first orders I ever made for cross stitch was a really large order. I'm not gonna lie. It was a huge order on one, two, three stitch. And I started, well, I should say, I learned how to stitch in December, December 24th. My aunt, Joanne, she's the one who taught me how to stitch. Thank you, Joanne. I don't know if you're watching, but I love you. <laughs> and she taught me how to stitch. So December 25th, the next day, Christmas day, I went and I just told my husband, like, can I, um, you know, get into another hobby and like order a huge one, two, three stitch order. And he was like, yeah, it's Christmas, do whatever you want. And so um, maybe he shouldn't have said that because <laughs> I went a little crazy, but this was one of the very first things that I kitted up. And this is Autumn Quakers. It is a Rosewood Manor pattern. It's a 2014 pattern. And I did get the called for Valdani flosses. They are so pretty. Oh, they're just beautiful love those and then i couldn't get to bloom linen for the life of me so i ended up picking out a 28 count country um vintage country mocha and this is really pretty i do really like this actually and i do think the piece will look lovely on it it's gonna be nice 
that's a pretty good representation of color. So yeah, I'm happy with this and um, it's pretty close to doubloon. The only thing that I would say is that doubloon has slightly larger mottling on it. This one is a little bit less, but it is really nice and yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm definitely going to stitch it on this. I did actually purchase a picture, a picture of this plus doubloon, which is the called for, and I accidentally bought the crystal. So I'm stitching my Halloween Hawk Run Hollow on that. And um, I also bought the complete wrong count. Like, I don't know what I was looking at. I, I need to stop shopping late at night. But anyways, I kitted this one up with that and I'm really happy with it. I'm super excited. It's comparable to the, the picture, at least in my opinion. And I do have another one of these kitted up and I like the color of this fabric with the other one. Um, I do want them hanging together. So I think it'll look nice. Speaking of which, this I placed in that same one, two, three stitch order. And here is Summer Quaker. So I just showed you guys Autumn Quaker. Here is Summer. This one is um, the same like Baldoni flosses, obviously different colors, but Baldoni flosses. And it is in truffle. I'm hoping, okay, that like first color that showed up was pretty good representation. This always shows up for everyone really brown. Okay, that's not bad. All right. So you can see it's like the most beautiful modeling. It's a 28 count, which I like stitching on 28 count. It's pretty fun. Isn't that stunning? She's beautiful. So I really like this fabric a lot, like a lot, a lot. It's very pink. I was kind of in the hopes that some of my book colors might make this show up true to color, but I don't think you can ever get how absolutely beautiful this is in person. It's like the perfect blush pink. It's just lovely. But this is going to look so beautiful. And I mean, talk about that picture not doing this justice. It just doesn't. The picture is like baby pink. I actually was thinking to myself like, mm, I really don't want to kit it up with that fabric. I do not like baby pink. Um, like really, really like just baby powder pink is what this pattern looks like. And then you get this in person, you're like, oh my God, I love it. So <laughs> definitely, um, I suppose it was one of those things where it's I learned to trust the pattern. And here is the Valdani flosses. These are just beautiful. I got this off of one, two, three stitch as well. And then it does call for one skein of um, 310. So I do have that in the bag as well. So those are really pretty. I don't know if I'm gonna buy the other seasons, honestly. I'm not obsessed with either of them, but I do kind of just have the goal of having them all stitched. Thing is though, is I'm the type of person that if I don't like a project, I'm not gonna wanna stitch on it, you know? So I do like the winter one. Um, I think I'll give that one a shot. Just not sure about the, what is it? The um, spring. That's the only one that I'm super not sure about, but we'll see. You never know, right? Um, the next project I have kitted up is Little House Needleworks. And this is the bookshelf. It just has some of your classics on it. And this one is DMCs, I believe. So I have all the DMCs just in a bag. You guys know my, my drill. And I do have a gold, but I believe I purchased the wrong gold, the wrong DMC gold. So I do need to figure out what is the actual called for. Um, I just haven't been able to find it yet, but I haven't really looked. So that's partially a me problem. And then the fabric I'm planning on stitching this is this 32 count um, gray. This is the Weeks Dye Works. As you can see, this is not gray at all. <laughs> so I was kind of surprised. I would call this more like flax or like wheat. I don't know. I wouldn't call it gray, but it is a nice color. It's a good neutral, like really good neutral. Um, it is a little gray. I mean, you can kind of see back here compared to the blues, it's a little gray, but then you put it with warm tones and it's definitely more, more neutral brownie. So I don't know. I'm really happy with it though. I think all of the DMC colors are going to show up great on that piece. So it's going to be lovely. I'm excited about that. The next project I have kitted up, this is what my grandma really likes, so maybe I'll stitch it and give it to her someday, who knows. <laughs> this is Matter's Choice, Carriage House Samplings. I'm trying to avoid as much glare as possible. This is a really pretty one, and this calls for MPIs. I love the MPI so much that I actually did order the call for MPI, which is the color 928. 
beautiful. <clears throat> so they're super pretty and oh my goodness, do I want to stitch a pattern in these MPIs? So, so soft. Gosh, so soft. And at my local LNS, I was visiting up there, Threadneedle Street with Denise. I picked up a 32 count copper kettle and I just picked up in like an 18 by 18 cut of copper kettle. So it should fit on there really nicely. It would be the perfect size to be framed. I love this shade. This is just stunning. And this is a super good representation of the color, I would say. Yeah, I just love it. I definitely think I want to pick up maybe like a half a yard or so of this fabric because I love this color. <laughs> it's so pretty. And I feel like it's one of those ones that a lot of colors would show up on. And personally for me, my favorite seasons are like fall and winter. So I think that a lot of those patterns will look lovely on this color. But yeah, I think the dark navy blue, I'll probably two over one because I do kind of want the stitches to show up a bit. So I'm thinking two over one, but we'll see um, when I actually start stitching it, what I decide on. But I do really like that. I'm happy with the project, happy with my choices. Um, that's when I don't think I'm gonna make any changes to. My next one, I love this designer. She is on Etsy, it's Happy Mood Point. This is Christmas, Christmas sampler. And again, I ordered that on Etsy. I ended up going to, again, see Denise at Threadneedle Street. And when I was there, I had picked up some DMCs, but then I saw some silk and I was like, ooh, pretty. <laughs> And as you guys know, that often goes with us stitchers. I then went ahead and just purchased the silks. <laughs> so I did an array of burgundy, um, forest green, and red. So these are the colors. Let's see. Um, this is ruby. This one is forest green, or sorry, forest glade. And this is I think this one's just red. Let me double check. Yeah, that one's just red. So I ended up picking one red, two rubies, and two forest glades. Um, no real reason, no real rhyme or reason. I just, for me personally, these two colors are Christmas. This is Christmas in two skeins. My house, I do super, super traditional, like, Christian Christmas, I guess is what you'd call it. Um, I adore these like dark 90s <laughs> red and green. Um, I love it. My like daughter's stocking is a super cheesy, like looks like it was homemade kind of stocking that has felt <laughs> like a felt gingerbread woman and tinsel. And I just, I like that super cheesy, like really Christmas in your face, like Christmas threw up in my house. I want nutcrackers everywhere. I love it. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's what I love for Christmas. I don't ever plan on changing that. Um, I did pick up a DMC metallic just in case I wanted to throw it in somewhere. I'm not sure if I will. I was thinking there's a couple of pieces, like maybe even just the word Christmas I could do in that. I haven't really decided. Um, and for this project, I have a 32 count Lugana. This is, um, gingerbread. It's a picture this plus fabric and I did buy a huge piece because I wasn't sure how big, I wasn't quite sure how big the Christmas piece was gonna be. And because I'm too lazy to even like go onto one, two, three stitch and just plug it into the calculator, I was like, mm, I'll just buy a ginormous piece. <laughs> so I did, <clears throat> but I am really happy with this piece. It's beautiful. The dye job is amazing, so I'm really excited about that. And I think that I'll have plenty left, which is great because I have ordered a couple more Christmas projects. And um, I'm hoping I can stitch like the Christmas on half of this and the other half have my, my other Christmas project on. So we'll see how that goes, but I am happy with that. I do really need to get a good pair of like cutting scissors. If you have a brand recommendation, you guys will have to let me know because I do want to cut this piece <laughs> so that I can have it stored away nicely. Um, the extra fabric stored away nicely, I should say. I'll probably leave it as is for now though until I actually start um, stitching the Christmas piece. And this is where I purchased the fabric, so. Hopefully that's coming through, floss and fabrics. But really good shop on Etsy. I'll definitely be purchasing from them again. Oops, sorry, 
touched my camera. <laughs> so I really am happy with that. Let's see, the next thing I have, this is the most primitive piece I have and I actually am thinking I might swap out the fabric on this one. I have to take this one out of the bag. It just gets too much glare. This is Stacy Nash Hollyberry Farm Christmas. I love this project. She is stunning. So I'm not really interested in any of the other Hollyberry Farms. They're like really primitive for my taste even. And I love things that look like old fashioned, but even for me, I was a little too primitive. So something about the Christmas one, I saw the Virginia Stitchers I'm working on it and I was sold. I just loved it, it was beautiful. I kitted this up with Kazoo. It's like a really nice, slightly mottled green. This fabric feels really dry. I don't know why. It's a Weeks Dye Works fabric, but it is really pretty. Um, unfortunately though, some of the called for flosses, they might just be a little too hidden on this fabric. So like I said, I have one other piece of fabric I've been thinking about for this one that I've already purchased and I've got it in my extra stash bag, but I don't know, I kind of like it. And honestly, when you're looking at the picture, there is a border on this and you cannot see it because it blends into the fabric so much that I'm kind of like, well, then mine's pretty, pretty darn comparable. The call for fabric, let's see, they used R&R Mink. And so what I did was I Google matched the color for R&R Mink and I got Kudzoo. And then I went and purchased this piece off of 123 Stitch. So yeah, I'm happy with the choice. They didn't have, there was one color that was missing that I couldn't find and it was the red. So I ended up doing a conversion to Weeks Dye Works Brick and I am really happy with that. And I also couldn't find the brown. So I ended up doing the DMC conversion because that was the only option I could find online for a good conversion. So just a brown. This is like your 3371. So happy with those. I like it a lot. Like I said, got that other fabric. So I'm going to see what I think about that, but pretty happy, pretty happy overall. I like the project. It's, it's cute. Let's see. Kind of forget what I have myself. So the next project is Haunted House Sampler. This is, gosh, who makes this one? Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks Primitives. This one is super cute. I love her. I do really, really want to start this one like ASAP. <laughs> um, this is another one that I do have one other piece of fabric that I might swap it out with, but I haven't quite decided yet. Um, again, got this in my LNS, Petite, um, a picture of this plus in fog from Threadneedle Street. You can just barely tell that there's modeling in this just barely let's see yeah there you go so it's very very slight but it's there and i think that might help because there's a couple of ghosts that are um stitched in on the house which won't be a big deal but this guy here he actually blends really much like pretty much completely into the background that's the only one that i'm thinking is like mm, she's probably not gonna show up. Even from back here, you totally can't see that little ghosty. So, you know, I'm thinking this fabric should be fine, but like I said, I have one other picture of picture, one other piece of picture this plus, oh lordy, say that 10 times fast. And um, I'm thinking that that might be a good match as well. So we shall see. And these are all the called for DMCs. I love it. Like this is so bright. I was not expecting it to be so bright and colorful, but I don't know. I can't get enough of it. I love it. I think it's just beautiful and fun and it's going to be a super fun one to frame. Um, I'm just imagining like a really funky, like, I don't know, maybe black or something glossy, like a crazy frame that's super Halloween, like in your face, or maybe an antique frame that looks super old and that'd be kind of quirky and fun for this like fun, um, almost you know, sampler style haunted house. So love that. You guys know Halloween is my favorite holiday. Literally nothing is better. <laughs> Ask my daughter, she agrees. <laughs> the next thing I have kitted up is Halloween Quaker. This is probably one you guys have all seen. 
The call for fabric on this one is murky, but I wasn't obsessed with the idea of murky. Um, I also was having a heck of a time finding it and decided to go with picture this plus Meyer. And I think that'll be super fun. My daughter just woke up from her nap, so she's hanging out in here with us. So yeah, that's a pretty good representation. It's like, um, <laughs> do you hear her uh, sound effects? She'll be in the background. <laughs> so this one is just, it's like a soft green with some purpley gray. I just thought this would be really fun to do this piece on because there's not very much green in it. So the green's not really going to fade anywhere and there's nowhere where there's a gray. So I thought that the colors would all pop nicely on this and yeah, I love it. Again, this is from the Floss and Fabrics. Oh, you want to say hello? Come, come, come. What do you want to say? Hi. What's your name? Mira Belta. How old are you, Amira Belta? Uh... Can you show me on your hand? That's right. Four years old. Love you. See you later. And then I did kid this one up with all the called for classic color works. So this one will be super fun because these are like Halloween in a bag. I mean, are you kidding me? That is so fun. So yeah, I think that's a good one. I'm super excited about this project. She is gonna be really fun. I like cannot wait for Halloween. I just, I wanna stitch all the Halloween things. I think it's a super fun project. I think everyone and their mother and sister and brother has stitched this except for me, so I'm feeling kinda left out. And I really wanna stitch that one, so. Don't mind the fan club, okay? Seattle Stitcher Junior, right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I've only got a couple more projects that I've kitted up. And let me grab them. Oop, I just have one left. The perfect timing for her to wake up. <clears throat> the last one I actually just showed on my last episode. And this is my witching, um, witching time of night by the Nebby Needle. And I did do the called for murky. Mm -hmm. And we turned out so good. I'm glad. So here's my piece of murky. But if you guys know, I'm kind of thinking about swapping murky into my, I'm kind of thinking about putting this for my, um, I want to show them my pictures. Okay, one moment, please. I'm really thinking about swapping out Murky for my Christmas at Hollyberry Farm. So that's why I pulled all this stuff out so I could take a look and see what I really wanted for fabrics. But I decided while I have the time and my daughter was napping, I would film a kit parade. Why not? And I did do almost all the called for colors. I couldn't find the black onyx, so I actually swapped it for Witching Hour, which is like slightly variegated but I'm still happy with it. And my daughter would like to show you her barn, which she made. And that, what's this? A little alien. Oh, it's a little alien as well, so. Very nice. So that's everything. Thank you so much, guys, for sticking around with me. I hope you enjoyed this little bonus episode, and maybe you just enjoyed meeting my daughter. I hope it didn't bother you guys too much. She's a hoot, she's really fun. She likes to hang out, she's a good kid, so I hope you don't mind her interruptions. But can you say bye? Bye. Can you say have a good day? Have a good day. Happy stitching. Happy stitching. Bye, everyone.